How many times have you heard me say one of my favorite scriptures is Romans 12, 1 and 2? Present your body. A what? A living sacrifice. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Anybody excited today? Yeah. Amen. Fireworks. You want to see some fireworks? Worship Him. Amen. You'll see all kinds of fireworks. Get it? Yep. So, I tried to get my dad to share, but he says, well, it's your turn. So, I got a message that I wanted to share at... Um, I shared it with my brother when I went to Michigan. I shared it at their church. And so, I don't know, how long ago was that? And I've been pondering on it. You know, I've been chewing it. And, and um, the Lord, the Lord kind of showed me a little different direction on it. And so, and I think it kind of goes, uh, well, not I think it does. It goes along with what God wants to do. This is, you know. I can jump right into, the, right into the end of it and say, look, the bottom line is God's given us a command. He's given us the command to cross over to the other side. All right? The other side doesn't mean heaven. Doesn't, the other side doesn't mean this, that, or whatever. Whatever you might think the other side is, the other side is him. He is the other side. Amen? But guess what he doesn't want to do? He doesn't want to do it individually. Back to the song. Worship. And I understand we sing a lot of these. I'll be the first to admit, we have to. We have to. We have to say it all the time. We have to have the tenacity of a weed individually that you're going to, because you can't have a, a corporate without individuals. But the individual is willing to lay his, no greater love does a man have, right? Then he do what? Did he not do that for you? So what do you think he expects? Amen? Okay? All right. So, here we go. And uh, let's see if I can get all this out. And what are the... I don't know how I got it. I got, I got hooked up on a couple songs, okay? And, and I'll, give you, I'll give you the punchline of the songs, and this is how I got into where I'm at. And the truth of the matter is, I wasn't sure that this is what they were using as their reference point or not didn't matter. This is what it spoke to me. The first song was, and you guys may e might even know it, it's the waves and the wind still know his name. He knows your name. And guess what he knows? Every wind that you ride on. Or every wave that you float on. You know me, I love the lazy river. He knows the name. Amen? And then the other one is, you've called me out, hear me now. You've called me out, that's all of you, beyond the shore into the waves. Do you get it? All right, here we go. Matthew 14. Everybody got their Bible with them today? We'll see if we can put this thing all together. All right. In straightway, Jesus constrained them. Isn't it amazing that he just used that word, pastor, about being constrained? And the story is, everybody know what the story is? This is Jesus walking on the water. They just had the miracle of the feeding the 5,000. Just prior to that, John the Baptist got his head lopped off. Right? See, we don't want that kind of ministry. No, we want the feeding the 5,000 ministry. But Jesus constrained the boys... And he told the boys, you get into the boat, and he gave them the command to go to the other side. And that's the command to you. You don't like it the way I say it? For 35 years, he's been giving you the command. Here's Nikita's approach. 
through the word, to go to the other side, to cross over. My brother Dale came here. He preached the message one time. He said, what's your occupation? Hebrew. Everybody know what the word Hebrew means? One that crosses over. Not only from Adam to life, but to cross to the finished work or to the fullness of what he has set forth. Or, I'll jump all the way in there, to Genesaret. Genesaret, that word means harp. Because God wants to take you, come here, come here. God wants to take you and he wants to strum on you. Play me your instrument. There it is, Brother Bud. And guess what he wants to do? You've heard pastors say it all these years. I'm just a conductor in the midst of the sympathy. Or sympathy. Symphony. Amen? So what's your occupation? One guy knows it. What's your occupation? See, this is, this is the thing is, nobody likes to ask the questions, right? Or answer, because back to what Brother Ron said, or what, actually what Pastor said. What did you say in Sunday school? That we have what? Low what? Low esteem. Low esteem. So, and, and you know what? Isn't it amazing? I said to my mom, when he started talking about this, look, see, we don't want to reach out to people because we're afraid of rejection. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. What did I just get done saying? If you don't like the do's and the don't, then give your all. Pick up your cross, carry it. You're a dead man. You have nothing to say, nothing to think about, nothing to worry about. You just follow him. Okay? So you have all this, all this low self-esteem, all, all this stuff, but you know what it is? I said this to my mom. I said, you know what that all stems out of? Pride. The epitome of man. When you put yourself before, when I put myself before any one of you, it's pride. And whether we like it or not, we all have it. And this is what was going on here, right? Jesus constrained the boys, gave them the command, get into the boat, go to the other side. Guess what, ha guess what happened in the midst of all that? Here we go. So he constrained the disciples to get into the ship and go before him to the other side while he sent away the multitudes. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? He tw tells 12 boys, tell, tells the boys, the 12 disciples, to get into the boat, go to the other side, while he sends, while he sends, while Jesus stays there and sends the multitude away. And when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And there's a mouthful. And when evening was come, he was there alone. But you. Everybody say, but me. Now say, but we. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. You like that? Nobody likes that, do you? That's it. Isn't it amazing that here we just had this big camp meeting, fed the 5,000, come down, tells the boys, get in the boat, go to the other side, but he sent them right in the midst of a storm. Come on now, folks. God has put us in the land of good and plenty, milk and honey, but it, isn't it amazing that in the sacrifices, right, honey is one of the things that he says that you don't put in with the burnt offering. 
Isn't that amazing? Mm. Now, we would think honey was always the good thing. The sweet life. The have it my way. Okay? So here we go. So he sent you in the middle of a storm. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Isn't that amazing? Can you picture it? Can you picture it? You're in the midst of the sea. The wind's blowing. Waves are crashing. And here you see Jesus walking on there. And what do they do? What do they do? The Bible says, this is what this says. They were troubled. Where? In their soul. So here's, here, remember the, back to the song? Let go my soul and trust in him. The waves in the wind still know his name. What I find to be a lot of times, we look at so much the waves and the wind out there, and he's dealing with the waves and the wind in here. We worry so much about the pressure outside, and God help us that we be more concerned about the pressure inside. All right. Let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see. I'm going to jump around because it has it in Matthew, it has it in Mark, and it has it in John. All right. Here's Mark. Straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and go to the other side before unto Beth Bethsaida while he sent the people away. That word Bethsaida, think about this. Got to think about this. This is where he's sending you. This is the command that he's given you to cross over to the other side. Bethsaida is a house of fruits. You've always heard God's a fruit. He's a fruit inspector. God is looking, see, man, man looks for gifts, right? What are gifts? It's better to give than receive. There's the gifts. He gave gifts and put them in the man. He's not looking for gifts. God is looking for the fruit that flourishes out of because of the gifts. But what has man done? Back to pride. It becomes, it's, it's, I'm telling you, three things are in the world. The lust of the what? Lust of the, and the, isn't that amazing? And that's what man looks for. That's what the church looks for. I say it all the time. We'll read, we'll say, well, the world's looking for signs, wonders, and miracles. I say, no, that's not true. The church is looking for them. And the bottom line is, you are the signs, the wonders, and the miracle. And God's looking for fruit that come out of each and every one of your lives. Because he's given you a command to get in the boat, the ark, and go to the other side. Isn't it amazing that when the veil, right, when it was rent, there was access. You can get in the box because you are the box. He just said it on Thursday, or maybe it was Sunday. Water baptism does what? Puts you... The baptism of the Holy Ghost or the wind gives you what? The expression of Christ. And the baptism of fire gives you the possession of the life of Christ. Because you're going to have to possess it. And it's going to be a baptism of fire. Because our God is a... Amen? All right, here we go. All right, let's see. They got in the boat, all right? And when he, all right, here's in Mark also, Mark 6 and 48. 
when, he was in the, when they were in the boat, it says that they were toiling, okay? You know what toiling, that word toiling is? Testing. Remember I said? He sent the boys in the midst of a storm, but it didn't change the command. The command was still to go to the other side. We'll go through this whole thing where Peter, you know, and Mark, Mark's the only one that, or I mean, Matthew's the only one where it talks about Peter, right? Walked on the water. But the thing is, all 12 of them shriek in fear because their circumstance that they were in, but it didn't change the command to go to the other side. What I like about Mark is, in Mark it says, it says, and when they seen Jesus walking by, he was going to just pass right on by them. And it was only because they seen him that he stopped. Because it didn't change the command that God told him to go to the other side. God hadn't changed the command. He's told you all. Christ Life Fellowship to go to the other side. What's your occupation again? Hebrew. To cross over. You know what? You don't like that job? You won't get the full payment. He just said it. The book, the book, to all seven of the churches... The command was all the same. He that has an ear, let him hear. You don't have an ear to hear? You need to find your, a place here and start asking God that he'd put Holy Ghost Q-tips in your ears. Because God's always talking. It's whether we're listening or not. Okay? Okay? All right. So toiling is t is 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 test is um was testing distress or trouble in rowing. All right, and he saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary to them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he he cometh unto them walking upon the sea, and he would have passed them by. You know what I find interesting about this? Toiling used eight times. Okay. Rowing means to push. Okay? We've all heard this scripture, right? you got to press, press in. You're pressing in, right? It's the marathon. You, when you hit that wall, when you see all that, you press. you got to press through it. The word, the, the word um, to the other side is to pierce. To cross over to the other, you got to pierce that thing. And so what it is, is, is in rowing, rowing, I, I, this is the way that the, that the Lord gave it to me. Rowing was five, is used five times. So you're going to have grace. Listen to me. Grace is here to enable you to propel yourself to a new day. Because the fourth watch, right, when Jesus came walking on him, he sent him out in the evening, but it says by the fourth watch. The fourth watch, they, they say it's anywhere from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. It's a new day. You're on the dawning of a new day. Listen up, Christ Life Fellowship. You're on the dawning of a new day. It isn't like yesterday. It isn't like today. But today, which is going to be tomorrow, but it's still today, it's the dawning of a new day for you. Because if you press in, if you push in, if you press, grace will propel you. Because it didn't change the command. The command is still to go to the other side. Even though that circumstances, the wind, the waves, all these different things are going on, all of life is going on, it hasn't changed the command. The command is to go to the other side. To pierce the other side. And let me tell you folks, I just got done telling, saying, he told 12 to get in the boat while he sent the multitudes away.
Amen? So in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went, and back over in Matthew now, unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a spirit. They cried out, oh, it's a ghost. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, I am. Doesn't that give you peace? When you're in the midst of your storm, when you're in the midst of your storm, I just preached the message here. Oh, Brother Tim, you're always saying the same thing. Well, yeah, because I hadn't changed the command. Go to the other side. Oh, pastor, you're telling the same stories. Day in and day out, week in and week out, month after month, year after year. Hadn't changed the command. Go to the other side. Immediately, Jesus spake unto them, said, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Peter, this is a Matthew. Peter said, you know, Lord, it be you. Lord, it. I love Peter. Because Peter is more like us than what we want to admit. Because we're, we're like, you know, Paul had, a, had to take Peter to task. And it was a humbling thing for Peter to say, you know, Paul's got some pretty tough things to say. Peter's pretty, pretty, pretty brash sometimes. That's like us. We find ourselves a lot like that. Oh, bless God, I'm going to do it. Come on now. All right. Oh, let's see here. And then Jesus answered him to do what? Come. This is the message I preached at my brother's house. The call was to come. But see, as I got into this thing and I started looking at it more, I started looking at the beginning of it. The call wasn't to come, even though it was. The command was still to go to the other side. Wasn't it? Sister Fran always says, it's not how you start the race. It's quiet in here. Nobody's excited today. It's true. It's true. See, see, I don't know why the Lord put this on my heart. I started thinking about this. This is a little side note, commercial break. You know, Ezekiel, he warned the people, the godly and the ungodly. I, I found it amazing. He said, the Lord told him, Warn the righteous. See, this, this, here, here's Peter. Bless God, I'm righteous. I don't need any warning. But he did it for purpose. Pastor sits here, and he warns. We don't like the word warning, all right? So the book of Proverbs, which I love it. We've been doing it for I don't know how many years. The instructions of the Father to the Son. The warning. Yeah. Amen? We don't, is that not true? So he says, warn them, because if you warn them, or if we give you the instructions and then you don't follow the instructions, guess who said it's on? But if we warn you and you don't do it, it's on your head. But if we don't warn you, or if we don't, like that one song said, if we don't tell you the truth, if we don't tell you what the Word says, remember Nikita's pathway? If we don't tell you what the Word says, then guess whose head it hangs on? The watchman. And because God has commanded you to get in the boat, to go to the other side, what's your responsibility now? To warn them. 
And we all know there's ways of doing it. The way to do it is to live your life before. Amen? Amen. So here we go. Oh, let's see. So he called Peter. Peter stepped out of the boat, right? And what happened? What happened when, when Peter stepped out of the boat? Woohoo, I'm on the water. I'm in the water, right? Woohoo, I'm in the river, right? And what did he do? See, what I find amazing is when he got out of the boat, the waves and the wind were still doing their thing. And see, I shared it as because he took his eyes off of Jesus. And then I started thinking about it. And the more I thought about it, no, where he took his eyes off was the goal. And the goal was to go to the other side. That's the fullness. You've heard me say all the time, we love Jesus. We do. We want a Savior. We want our healer. We want our baptizer. We want our blesser. We want our Santa Claus. We want our want, our want. Hear all the we's in there? But do we really want Lord? Don't I say that all the time? Do we want Lord? See, to say Lord is to lay it all down. To say Lord is to picking up your cross. To say Lord is keeping your... While all the wind and the waves and all this stuff, life is still happening, folks. And guess what? You're still going to job, if you have one, or school. You have your family. You're, all of this stuff is still going on. But your goal is to go to the other side. And when I say goal, the truth of the matter is, it's really it's the command. Get rid of the goal. The command is to go to the other side. And Nikita just got done saying the approach is by sacrifice because, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. what? So you all know that, right? All right. So now that you know that, I don't have to say anymore. I'm first partaker of this, bro. I found this exciting, the fact that here God took 12 people, told them to get in the boat, gave them a command to go to the other side, knowing he sent them in the midst of a storm. How many times do we go through and we read, read these stories where they're either in the midst of the fire? You don't think he knew Daniel was going to go to the lion's den? Do you think that he didn't know that the three Hebrew children were going to get stuck in the furnace do you think that do you think that he didn't know that the children of Israel were going to go into Egypt do you think he doesn't know your circumstances do you think he doesn't know your but the command is to go to the other side Amen? Amen? All right, here we go. Let's see here. All right, here was another one. Let's see. Oh, that was in, in John. In John's gospel, it says, they entered into the ship and went, went over the sea towards Capernaum. I found this interesting. When I looked up these things, there was Capernaum, Bethsaida, and Genesaret. Capernaum means the field of repentance. Did Nikita just talk about that down there? I didn't make this up. Also talks of transformation in the city of comfort. Isn't that what the church is? It's a city of comfort. I love that. I thought that was good. Okay. Let's see here. What else did John say? 
John talked about the, the sea arose by reason of a great wind, and it blew. So when they rode five, five, to, uh, five and twenty or thirty furlongs, or, or, all right, basically I think it was like about six miles. It said that they were in the midst of it, or out in the middle of it, this lake. Where are you at? Where are you at? You're in the middle of somewhere. But it doesn't change the goal. It doesn't change the command. See, no matter how we look at this or what you go through, it doesn't change the command. The command is still to go to the other side. Your occupation does not change. The occupation or the command only changes is if you will it to. Meaning that, and I ain't doing that. All right? Okay. I love the fact that it says constrained. Okay? Jesus constrained the boys. All right? You get down to the end of it, what, what verse is that? 14? What, what is that in? Is that, is that John, Matthew, Mark? 14 and 13. Matthew says that when Jesus got in the boat, says he worshipped. They worshipped. All right, back to the song. We worship you, we live. You know the word worship is? Remember when my brother came here and he shared on Gideon? Remember the 300? You remember that? That's what it speaks of. It speaks of licking a dog, licking the hand of the master. That's what they did. John's gospel says immediately they were where they were supposed to be, on the other side. Amen? Mark's gospel said... They didn't consider the miracle of the 5,000. John's gospel says that they willingly received him. I like that one. Because you know what that says? You've got to lay it down. All three of them say that they saw him. They all saw him walking on the water. You know what that tells me? That they were all together, and they were all looking. And in the midst of it, they seen him. But it didn't change the command to go to the other side. I can't get off that. The command is to go to the other side. It hasn't changed. It's not going to change. That's it. And really, that's what it said. See, we all like John's Gospel that says, immediately. See, and when I read this, remember when I said, the waves and the wind still know his name? The waves and the wind inside know his name. We deal with more inner turmoil than external turmoil. Your pastor sat right here and said at least three times, maybe four times, I'm not a what? Psychologist. There's a lot to be said in that. What's that talking about? Soul. Soulish. That's why the, it, it got me on the song, Let Go My Soul. See, we sing, and don't get me wrong, we sing all these songs about want to refresh the soul. The soul needs to come into submission. If the soul wants to be refreshed, it's called submitting to the spirit. That's going to bring refreshment to the man. But just to have refresh or 
revive my soul is not going to get it. That's not going to get the job done. Amen? All right, here we go. Genesaret. Genesaret means heart. All right? Or a garden of riches. Look around, folks. Are you looking around? Who do you see? Oh! Yeah. See, I sit up here and I'm flapping my jaws and I'm waiting for a response. That should have got you excited. Ronnie, when you put in your garden, I know you didn't do one this year, what did, what did you expect? Sister Fran, you put in your garden, what do you expect? Hey, I put a garden in this year. You know what I expect? How many, how many other people in here have gardens? Right? Let's see you raise your hands. Nobody. <laughs> Annie's got a garden. What do you expect, Annie? You know what God expects? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. God expects fruit out of you. Expects fruit out of you. The Bible says... The Bible says that the gifts, that the giftings and the callings of God are without repentance. He doesn't take them back. God expects fruit. God has given you a gift. I don't care what it is. God expects fruit. If you're not producing, you need to find a place to get some fertilizer on that thing a little water so that can grow so you can produce some fruit. Look around. Say to your neighbor, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know you can encourage me, but it's my responsibility. All right, look at your neighbor. Neighbor, I know you can encourage me. You can even fluff and buff me. Which is really what I want. You don't have to say that. But it is my... I didn't hear everybody say, but it is my... Responsibility. All right, uh... Ezekiel said, the Lord said, warn the people. I just warned you. I'm first partaker. It's his responsibility to pastor. He's not a babysitter. I'm 54 years old. I don't need anybody to change diapers because I don't wear diapers. I wear big boy pants. So that tells me it is my responsibility to dig in the Word. If I have a question, I ask the Lord and I can ask Pastor. Because sometimes the Lord talks through other people and not always to you directly this way because He talks through them through Him or Sister Fran, or maybe one of your elders, or maybe one of your kids. But it's my responsibility to hear. All right, here we go. That was a freebie. Okay, Genesaret. Heart, remember? You like that, huh? And I heard a voice from heaven, as a voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, right? The water, the thunder, the waves, right? And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. That is the corporate sun. That is your destiny. That is the command of the Lord to you to go to the other side.
the fullness of the Christ. It isn't sitting down here and put all the good scriptures on my refrigerator. No, we take the balance of the word, but it doesn't change the command. The command is still to go to the other side. And you're not going by yourself. Bless God. Praise the Lord. Doesn't that excite you? That excites me. Guess what? I don't have to drive all by myself. Hey. Yeah, it's in the boat with government. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and the wind, they still know his name. I'll guarantee you, the waves and the wind in your life know his name. What we want is we want Jesus, Jesus, hey Jesus, because he can't hear. Because he didn't respond. Right? Well, isn't that the way it is? We pray more or louder or whatever, woo, because he didn't respond immediately. See, like I said, remember, we all want it like John, immediately. But the waves and the wind, you know? But we want him to come and take the waves and the wind, be still, peace, be still. It's my responsibility. And guess what he does? He calms the storm. Because the waves and the wind still know his name. Because when we let go our soul and trust in him, because he's called you out from the he's called you out from the place of safety. This isn't against anybody in the back row. He's called you from the back to move on up. Remember George, uh, what was his name? George, uh, yeah, moving on up to the east side. To the deluxe apartment. Telling you. All right, here we go. This one's been kicked around here a lot for a lot of years. Amos, three and three. How can what? How can two? The two is him and us. How can we walk together if we don't agree with what his word says? See, it doesn't say, how can two walk together unless he be agreed with us? All right. How can two? How can Christ's life fellowship walk together with God if we don't agree with his word? But Brother Tim, I don't like that portion. Hate it for you. Hate it for you. You know, I think I, uh, we had somebody, I don't remember, but Brother Varner, who it was, says, guess what? Can't have your baby any other place. Remember he told you to get in the boat and go to the other side. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see here. Contrary. We always have things that are contrary to our life, right? It's just going to be that way. You might as well get it through your head and get it, get it down in your spirit that if the name of Jesus brings offense, there's going to be some contrary winds in your life. Okay? Let's see. Ah, one other script. Oh, what was that? Oh, yeah, on agreed. Let's see. What was that word agreed? Amos. Amos, Amos, Amos. Famous Amos. He made some good cookies. Agreed. Okay? This is, see, this is how I know all the, that these scriptures, that they all link, that he's saying the same thing. Because that word agreed in Amos 3 and 3, how can two walk together unless they be agreed, is, is to gather by or assembled by appointment. Isn't that amazing? He picked you 
out to pick on you because God's a fruit picker. Is that not true? All right, you didn't like that one. All right, here we go. Let's see. I talked about the fourth watch. It's the dawning of a new day. Okay? Water. Water puts you in Christ. Wind gives you the expression of Christ. Fire, fire gives you what? Possesses or possessors of the life of Christ. I think that was about all I wanted to say. I don't know if it came out the way that, that the Lord really spoke it to me, but I think the key is that the command, if you don't hear anything else I have to say today, go to the other side. Beloved, listen to me. He has deposited grace in our life to propel us to the other side. Doesn't matter what the waves look like. Doesn't matter what the winds look like. He knows. They know his name. He can stop them in an instant. I find in my life, normally he doesn't stop them. You know why? Let me say this. I say this all the time. Because the word says it. God ponders the heart. What's God do? Come on. All right, so you all know, God ponders the heart. You know why? Who knows why? Because he's looking to see how we respond to every situation, to every wind, to every wave in our life. Whether you like that or you don't like that, I can't help that. The word says God ponders the heart. The guy cuts you off on the highway. We laugh about it, but this is getting down to the nitty-gritty. We want to proclaim this great, marvelous, wonderful, but we have no self-control. Pastor said, I don't know if it was Sunday or Thursday, he said, he made the little statement, he said, he said, you want to know? Just let me go cross-grain to your thinking. He wasn't saying his opinion. He was saying taking the word of God, bringing forth the truth, and let it just go cross grain the way that you think it says. And God partners the heart to see how we respond. Because it hasn't changed the command. Christ Life Fellowship, the command is still to go to the other side. Look around. Look around. See who's in the boat with you. Amen? Look around. See who's in the boat with you. Because you're going to the other side. Amen? All right, on your feet. Fourth of July weekend. Everybody be safe. You know that we opened up our house for the 4th, we're, you know, I think Sandra put it out on Facebook, so if you, if you want to come, come. If you don't, 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 feel, uh, don't feel bad about it. I, I get it. I understand it. Okay? Um, look around. You see who isn't here. I'm more concerned about who is here. And you know what I mean by that. They, they may not physically be here, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to continue to pray for the seed, that God would call the seed from the four corners of the earth, that God would draw, because God is, I'm telling you folks, God has given a command to go to the other side. And you know what? There is always going to be a first fruit company. When you plant a garden, you go in there, we just, we just picked a jalapeno pepper. Woo! Something hot and on fire. I love it. That's what God's looking for. Something hot and on fire that he can pick and inspect and he can fully consume. And let me tell you, folks, that's you. If that doesn't excite you, I don't, know, I don't have anything else to say. Go home. Have a safe weekend. Be safe this weekend. You know, 
Watch sparklers, fireworks, all that. Be safe. Go in the power of his might. Ronnie?